guys, Marco here with the Vatican's. Good morning on a uh, rather gloomy Los Angeles Sunday. And uh, sorry for that little somber intro. I originally had it done with Ain't Talking About Love, but um, given what just happened a few days ago, it just, when I was watching it, it didn't feel right. It was just way too happy given the circumstances. And as you all know, Eddie uh, left us a few days ago, which gave me a kick in the butt to finally do this review, or not really a review, it's really, like the intro says, a love letter uh, to these three generations of the uh, Wolfgang. Um, and uh, here I am, I'm gonna start it today and just kind of see where it goes. It's something I wanted to do for a long time because I love these guitars so much. And it's not really uh, as much as a review as it is maybe a comparison, a journey that we can dis discover together from, uh, you know what, I'll start all the way from taking it out of the case to put all three next to each other and compare them, plug them in. I'll do a little sound comparison. As you can see, I have my cats with me, ready to go and ready to rock. Uh, they love when I do that. And this is just uh, for the love of it, um, just a little, you know, I love these guitars. I've been playing them since 1996 when the first, uh, when I first was exposed to the PV, I missed the Ernie Ball one. And I'm very fortunate to have one of each. And I think they're phenomenal guitars. And you probably heard me say in other reviews, and by the way, thank you so much for watching them and leaving great comments. Uh, it's very important, I always point that out. I was not a, Eddie Van Halen fanboy. I was an Eddie Van Halen fan. I was never a fanboy. And that's the greatest compliment I can give to his gear because I bought it because I truly thought it was that good. When I first played the PV, uh, you have to understand, me and my friends, we were at Berklee College of Music. We were playing Ibanez seven strings. Uh, our evening was compiled of seeing who can make it through the uh, Dream Theater Awake album, the furthest without making a mistake. So if you had told me I'm gonna play a PV guitar, I would have, well, I wouldn't have even laughed at you. I would have thought you lost your mind. And then one day I walk into the guitar store in 1997 and I see this black PV Wolfgang and I plug it in and, 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 and I literally, I don't even know how I bought it. I think I must have borrowed money because as a student I had, and I, I have no idea how I bought it. Somehow I had to have it that badly that I somehow came up with 2,200 bucks at the time, which, which was stupid. I, I think I took a store credit, uh, uh, borrowed money, carried furniture on the weekends, and, and, and a month later, I somehow had that guitar, a PV guitar, <laughs> you know? And now obviously it's the stealth, and then later I was able to get the, um, the, the Ernie Ball, which I guess is, and we'll get to that, which one is what and sought after and all that stuff. But I always looked at those guitars very neutrally, and. You might have heard me say from my Mesa Boogie JP2C review, I didn't really want to buy a John Petrucci product. It was just that the amp was so good. I, I, I felt I would miss out if I, if I didn't own it. And the, and the same I always felt about the Wolfgangs. I don't think whether you like Eddie Van Halen or not, and how can you not? But to me, as an innovator, th those guitars are so good. Here's a major difference, though. Uh, and I'm sorry if I'm talking about, again, I want this to be a journey together and, and maybe you can watch it in steps. So there's no, there's no time limit on this one. But we're sharing a great loss and, and a great love for, for, for this gear. Um, what's so unique about, uh, about that guitar, signature guitar versus all the other ones, is that this signature guitar changed a lot throughout the generations. So 96 through to, uh, to 2020, what's that? We're talking 20, well, only 24 years, 25 years. And each generation, Ernie Ball to PV to EVH, uh, couldn't be more different than, than the previous generation. You know, if you look at a Les Paul, a Les Paul signature model has really always been the same. With, um, the only difference is the variation in necks. If you look at a Satriani guitar, I mean, it's the same thing for like 35 years, you know, and now it comes in different colors and a Sustaniac, you know, the Steve Vai model, the same. And I'm not making those guitars, they're phenomenal guitars. I own some of them, I think they're great, you know. The Momstein model is the same, the Eric Clapton model is the same. 
Eric Johnson is the same, Paul Gilbert, they're all the same, you know, they never changed. But Eddie, Eddie's generations were always different. One guitar is completely different than another. Uh, yes, you can say as they got uh, older, he got wiser, I guess he improved, and you would like to believe that each generation is an improvement. So is a Ferrari, but it doesn't mean that uh, an older Ferrari isn't uh, just as passionate and sometimes even more sought after and more expensive than the newer Ferrari, even though the newer Ferrari might be better on paper. So I just want to discover those three generations with you, share my thoughts subjectively, objectively, and hopefully have fun and we celebrate one of the, well, the greatest guitar player, influencer, innovator, as far as I'm concerned, to ever walk the earth. Uh, and I don't say that as a fanboy, I say this just as somebody who genuinely is starting to understand now the impact that man had on guitar making and guitar playing, uh, something that's just, just mind boggling, you know? So, you know what? Let's just have fun. Uh, let's uh, please leave in your comments things I missed or did wrong or, 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 or things you'd like to share. And we'll discover these guitars together. We'll start with uh, the um, Ernie Ball, take it out of the case, work our way down to the PV, to the EVH, put them next to each other, plug them in. I'll promise you I'll do sound comparison, cutting it, edit, editing it together right after one another so we can compare the pickups, you know, the DeMarzios to the PV, to the new EVH custom wounds, and uh, just see where it goes. And most importantly, celebrate the great legacy and do it together. All right, here we are, and as promised, we will start with the first generation Eddie signature, which is the Ernie Ball, and uh, this is the original case it comes with. This is the much sought after 1991, okay? I'm not going to go into many, too many specs until we have them all next to each other, which is going to be great. This came in different colors, as you know, and obviously, first and foremost, let's take in this absolute beauty. Um, so they came in different colors, red, purple, natural, uh, obviously gold. Uh, this is based on the Axis model, and as you know, the relationship was very, very, very shaky between Sterling and Eddie. He didn't have a lot of freedom to kind of take this existing model and modify it too much. Um, don't want to get too much into the history, but uh, it didn't end well. <laughs> and there was a lot of production issues. This was a very expensive guitar at the time. This uh, was a $1,600 signature model, which in 1991 is a, a lot, a lot, a lot of money. Probably one of the most sought after uh, Van Halen signature guitars. No two are alike. They're absolutely amazing. They're beautiful. They are, they are like the uh, Ferrari F40. They're far from the best or greatest specs, but obviously collectors value, etc., etc. Makes this very, very sought after. And I actually, uh, I'm going to zoom in a little bit here, and uh, I have the gimbal, so uh, I'm sorry if it goes slow, but... Uh, just uh, really want to take the time to uh, point this out. This guitar actually has a lot of flaws. Um, it is extremely prone to fading, as you know. And this one sat in the case for most of its life until I acquired it. And if you know me, of course, you know it will be played into the ground, finally. Uh, but uh, you'll see a lot of people try to sell them online as natural, even though they were actually colors that faded out. So you have to be very careful and always run the serial number. What's so cool here, I have the original paperwork, which is very rare. Uh, shows, you know, July 91, uh, the inspection card, which is incredibly cool to see. And then here I have uh, the actual spec sheet, you know, that it came with, which is, Super charming. I mean, just holding paper from, uh, from you know, 30 years ago is really, really, really cool. And then you get another little spec sheet, which is really, really awesome. Um, 
you know, and just uh, memorable stuff, historic stuff. And uh, this is really, really, really cool right here. So uh, this is what the inspection sheet is the 10th. And 19 days later, it's in uh, Miami, a store that is now out of business. And here's the original sales receipt, $1,600. Incredible. They, uh, I feel that uh, the first two years were truly awesome before the production issues started. As you all know, this is now the Music Man Axis. For you who don't know, the fact is that this model actually existed already in some form. And Eddie liked it and he kind of decided to base his signature model on this. But again, and you can tell in the PV, which is a drastic departure from all these specs, things changed. So again, production issues and personal issues between Eddie and uh, Sterling, the grumpy old man. Well, they were both grumpy. Eddie was probably high and drinking a lot during that time, as we all know. And uh, Sterling, as you know, can be a very grumpy old man as it is if you ever dealt with him, but that's okay. They uh, both provided us with endless joy and great products. So I'm gonna put the case away here for a second and really kind of focus on the guitar here for you because that's what this is all about. And you see this beautiful quilt under light that changes depending on the angle that you are, which is uh, no two are alike. They're all basswood body uh, on uh, quilted or figured or uh, striped maple. More or less the guitar stayed the same with bird's eye. What a lot of people don't know is actually the more bird's eye, the less stable the neck. So this one is really nice. It has uh, a little bit not too much. Bird's eye is not that strong of a wood, so the more bird's eye you have, the uh, actually the opposite is true. The more bird's eye you have, the, the less stable than, uh, the, the wood is. So um, a lot of people don't know that about that wood. Beautiful grain, not too much, not too little, just perfect. Very unique to the Ernie Ball is uh, how the uh, Headstock here is glossed out and then it just goes straight into the unfinished, well, it is finished, tongue oil and, and some kind of wax, but uh, kind of rather, a rather simple and primitive, just kind of cut off how it goes into that, which makes me wonder, and I, I never understood that, and maybe you all can put in the comments, why not just leave the whole neck unfinished, quote unquote. Very, uh, Famous Ernie Ball neck joint there with the five bolt. Okay, and then the serial, obviously very, very low serial number on this. As you can tell, this is mint condition. Uh, you can tell right there, and sorry if you see me in the glare, I'm gonna try to get out. So you see the line there, and you see it right there. Right there, and right there. This is a three piece, so this isn't actually very Attractive, this should be a one piece or obviously a two piece. The top is a two piece clearly, but uh, when you think about it, for a $1,600 guitar, um, this is kind of, I mean, there you can see the line right there from the natural aging and right there. So you can see the three piece body. That's really not very impressive when you think about it from a high end uh, perspective, uh, it really should be a two piece. Oh, sorry, the back really should be a one piece. Uh, so kind of, you know, but again, the Ferrari F40 was a primitive Ferrari, no leather, no radio, no nothing, uh, no thrills, bills, uh, bells and whistles, sorry, my English, <laughs> I'm still a fob, but, um, uh, you know, it's kind of, yeah, okay, you know, I'll, uh, there's uh, such a stigma around these guitars, you can't say anything bad, and if you know me, uh, I call it for what it is, uh, never be a fanboy to the point where you make excuses. Well, same with politics for that matter, isn't it? Um, the tremolo is very unique on this one. When you actually put it in, and this is another, I really design flaw, if you, I, I don't like that. You have to take this whole back plate off and then tighten the nut. And that will dictate how stiff this is, if you want it loose or not. So you can't just unscrew it here. You have to go all the way through the back to do that. Three pickup selector. Um, Three-way pickup, I should say. The Marzio pickups. 
They were DiMarzio pickups. No tone control here, as you can tell. Um, and 10-inch uh, radius, which is rather not that... No compound, no asymmetrical, nothing. 10-inch, which is kind of like the, the Polaroid Smith. Rather not that good for shredding. And uh, oh boy, did that change going to the Wolfgang. We went from 10 to 15. <laughs> okay. And then the EVH Stealth is a compound 12 to 16. So incredible differences between the generations. Just absolutely incredible uh, differences. Uh, good uh, work. You obviously have access to the neck uh, rod right there, which is very nice. Uh, one of the things that I personally think is um, really uh, rather disappointing and, and quite frankly, not aesthetically very pleasing at all is notice how the uh you see how the nut there just halfway ends and and again uh, you know it's hard to criticize the ferrari f40 because it is one of the greatest sports cars ever made but it doesn't mean we also have to lie to each other but that i mean there's really absolutely nothing beautiful about that and i'm trying to figure out what the uh, I, 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 i'm having a hard time justifying it explaining it but this ain't pretty. Why would you? And also from a perspective of stability, there's nothing, I don't know, there's nothing cool about this. Uh, so I think that, uh, and I doubt Eddie would have wanted it like that. So, because clearly on the other guitars, it is not like that. Uh, you can tell the density of the wood is just absolutely fantastic. Forgive me as I zoom in here a little bit, or sorry, make it rather. There you go, just you can tell, and the quarter sawn neck right there. So from that perspective, the guitar is top notch. Remember, this is 91. You don't have the resources and the craftsmanship uh, that you have today. You had great craftsmanship, but of course, uh, you know, you're talking 30 years later. So for a, uh, keeping it in perspective for a 1991, this is, uh, this is great work. Um, I put on the D-Tuner, which of course they didn't have, and you have the Ernie Ball um, uh, licensed uh, Floyd Rose, which actually is an invention by Eddie, the way it came to be ultimately, finally, and just look at this beautiful wood. Um, just, yeah, just really, really gorgeous guitar. Again, very sought after. They're about uh, forty-five to fifty-five hundred dollars before Eddie passed. So now, of course, they're going to keep going up. I've seen about an average of five hundred dollars per year. Um, people are scared to play them. I say, well, you can't take it with you. Really, really beautiful. So let's go to our next guitar, the uh, PV Wolfgang, which. Replace this after the rather ugly divorce of uh, EVH and uh, Music Man. Again, they kept this design. Now sell it as an Axis, which is actually what it was before to begin with. And let's see the drastic change. And I'll purposely do one at a time so that we kind of stay focused and then we'll put them next to each other. Oh, there's one thing I'm sorry that I wanted to point out. I almost forgot besides that rather ugly nut design that's hanging over and that's the tremolo uh the floyd rose which here rests on the body which is incredible the pv had an improvement had an actual cavity and so does the EVH stealth as you'll see but this is um does, let me let me really get this for you so you can see what i'm talking about for you who don't know they're all dive bomb only, which I absolutely love. Sorry for the shaking. Um, but this one rests on the body, look. It has a sub plate underneath, but then you're actually resting on the body and abusing the body. And, and I don't, I just don't see how that's a, a, a good design. You should have like a sub cavity there or, uh, you know, because what you're doing is really abusing the part of the look at that great shot part of the of the wood so if i go all the way down here see there's that sub plate and there's no support like if you bang this 
like I just did, you're banging it against the actual body. Um, and I don't, uh, <laughs> I'm having a hard time thinking that's a good design. And clearly, obviously, so did Eddie, because the moment he got to PV, that, that changed. Um, so I, I just don't, uh, I mean, all you're going to do is put dents in the body if you really use and abuse this. But that being said, it is dive bomb only, which is great. I love that. Even on most of the Floyd Roses, I kind of trim block them just because they're incredibly annoying. Uh, not a great thing Eddie invented, the detuner, which works flawlessly when dialed in the right way. So that's really, really, really that in a nutshell for the Ernie Ball. Let's check out what followed thereafter and the incredibly drastic differences. All right, here we are, the generation right after the Ernie Ball years. This is 1996 to, oh boy, 2004, three, four, correct me if I'm wrong. The last two years were some custom shop PV models. Again, the more sought after the early years because the patents were still pending. And uh, let's take this beauty out of the case. And again, I'm trying to go slow for you here. I'm on the gimbal, so we and so we don't have too much shaking. And there you go, just an absolute beauty. As you'll see in a few seconds, a complete departure with regards to specs. And that's always what's so weird to me. You know, people, you know, in the Ernie Ball forums and groups, we of course all agree the most valuable, I mean, we don't have to agree, the market dictates it. But the reality is that that's the specs he got away from the most, which is the Ernie Balls. And here he actually had freedom to really do his own thing. And PV gladly took him. They started coming out with the 5150 amps as well. And it was just a next logical step in revolution and evolution. The fact is that Hartley PV actually convinced him to put the tone knob on. That is a fact. In an interview, they said that Eddie still wanted to stick with the volume knob solely, but uh, Hartley convinced him to add the tone knob as it will make it more appealing to a wider mass. And another incredible departure right off the top, as you can see, the pickup switch is now out of the way and more in a Les Paul setting. Remember that Eddie was openly always after that, trying to find the best between a Strat and a Les Paul, which I think the EBH Stealth actually accomplished. It did what the Paul Reed Smith failed to do. It comes, as you know, or remember, or if you had one of these with this great guard. Not much changed, basswood on uh, maple with bird's eye. But let's take it out of the case. And if you look at the case, much different shape. It also has that uh, rather body form fitting case rather than your regular rectangular flight case. And what I will do is I'll take it out here. And I'm so happy I have this ring light to kind of go with that. Uh, oh, just I'm sorry. I'm, I'm always a little bit speechless when I take these out because of just how beautiful they are. Um, of course, they came in quilted, figured, all kinds of versions. This is, of course, the glossy black that he uh, so much loved to play that you can also see in the video Human Beings by Van Halen. If you're like me, one of the very few people that liked Sammy Hagar Halen more. <laughs> um, manual, uh, spec sheet, nice to have the original. And this is 1990. 97, 96, it says you're 97, uh, 803. So I wonder if that matches with the serial on the guitar and I'll have a quick look. Uh, no, that's something different. So that serial here is not particular to the guitar. That's just to the actual code probably for the printout. I'm gonna put this, uh, the manual, I'm not gonna, you know, I don't wanna waste your time with that, it's pretty, probably self-explanatory what the, 
the manual is all about. But what I do want to do is put the case out of the way. Forgive me as I move that over here. And I'll come right back to this gorgeous instrument because it is all about the guitars today. Of course, not that these three generations are the only Van Halens. There's a thousand models in between. We're talking, of course, about the main ones. So, new tremolo system, whereas with the other one, you would have to go to the back plate and unscrew and screw and screw back. This is a simple rotary screwing system, but very unique because when you get in, excuse my... Uh, let me switch hands here, I apologize. And I love, as you know, always doing this in real time for you. So when you, when you get in here, it actually, unlike a fender, it doesn't reach a dead bolt point, so it keeps going. So the only option you have is to have it, I don't know what you would call that, firmly loose. Uh, but, or if you screw it out, of course, you can have it hangy loose. Kind of weird choice of words, but <laughs> I'm trying here, Sunday morning. <laughs> and I love that. I like that because I love sometimes having it like this and sometimes just fully loose, but it is really, really, really cool. Um, the detuner now came standard, works flawlessly, and the pickups are uh, PV custom designed ones, according, of course, to Eddie's specs. But as if this isn't departure enough, look what else we have. We have an arched body. So finally, Eddie got to do what he wanted to do all along, add resonance. And so you have to understand, this is the next generation. And I earlier, I said how signature models have always been the same, which is weird to me. I'm having a hard time believing that Joe and Steve and Noon and all these guys never wanted to kind of go somewhere else or were too scared or too bored or whatnot. I mean, this is just one generation later and everything is different. The pickups, the tremolo, the body, the shape of the body. It has an arched body, different uh, a tuning system, different, I mean, everything. Um, even the pots on this are different as they first time went to 500 from the 250. So. Um, let's stand it up and, and kind of see what we're talking about here. Uh, I suppose, uh, and you know what, sorry for the big shine. Let me get a little bit on an angle here for you. I suppose this is not the prettiest uh, tremel. As you can see, it's kind of rather blocky on the right-hand side. The PV version of the Floyd Rose. The rod's still accessible there, so not much has changed. But are you ready for this? Not only is the body different in shape, form, and being arched, but we went from a 10-inch radius to a 15. 15, boys and girls. This isn't like we just went from a 10 to 12 and kind of, I mean, this is flat. It is not compound and it is not asymmetrical, but it is a brutal 15. Look how flat that is. I mean, those are, it's a completely different guitar completely different. I mean, this is like going from one generation car to like five generations later, and this is only the next generation. So in 94, you bought an Ernie Ball, uh, uh, or 95, I should say, and then in 96, you buy this. You're, you're, you're uh, 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 one quarter away from the same player giving you two different signature models that are completely different. Bird's eye. This one, very, very beautiful, gorgeous. And then on the back, again, you don't want too much. The more bird's eye, the actually weaker it is. Patent pending. Uh, after 99, they actually got the patent and then you see numbers here. So a lot of people prefer the patent pending. Um, just absolutely gorgeous. Notice, oh, I'm so sorry about that. My, looks like my gimbal went, uh, lost the gyro there for a second, I apologize. I'm so sorry the battery on my uh, gimbal died. So I'm going full manual for you guys. You see how hard I'm working for you here. You can even see me in the, in the reflection there today. Um, so as I was saying, you can tell no back plate here. So we are direct 
through the body into the neck. The axis is very similar, and not a huge difference. Um, tuners stay the same, not a huge difference. Notice the cutout. And I'm purposely not putting them next to each other just yet. I want you to see and enjoy one at a time because they're so, they deserve their own spot. But notice, notice there's a cutout now here. And this one is slightly deeper too. Whereas the only ball, as you know, goes kind of here. So they both end at the, at the uh, around the 17th fret, but 17th fret, but you have simply more access now. So he really improved on everything. Arched body, more resonance, different tram system, a different axis heel, different uh, cutouts, different fret radius. And this is huge, guys, from 10 to 15. What does that tell you? I mean, I want you to think about it for, for a second. He basically says, he doesn't go from 10 to 12, which lets you know he was happy with 10. He just wanted it a little bit flatter. No, he went from 10 to 15, which leads me to believe he all along wanted it to be flatter. Um, and because that's just an incredible jump. That is an absolute incredible jump to go from 10 to 15. Um, and then I always thought this was my favorite headstock um, next to the Ernie Ball, maybe because of how they did that. They held this against a, a little rounder on the machine and gave it that little kind of shark fin. As you know, in the stealth, this is completely cut out, which is my least favorite headstock. And then another incredible major difference. Get a load of this. The fretboard on this one is glued on. See that? Which, when you press it like that, gives you a little bit of a tighter, tighter mid-range. Nothing I would ever notice because when you play this with so much gain and distortion, you'll probably never notice. But again, very, I mean, those are incredibly huge departures. Between everything I just mentioned, and then on top of that, the, the, the neck not even, not even being a one piece. I mean, I can't even keep up here. This isn't just we're going slow into the curve. I mean, this is a completely redesigned guitar. And look what we did at the nuts. We did not go full flush, but we made progress. Look at that. Still hangs over. So we went from 50% hanging over to 25% <laughs> hanging over. <laughs> Why you would have that little hangover is beyond me. It looks so weird and unfinished. And, and you can just tell how beautifully the fretboard is glued on here and how thick it is. But again, I do not see the sense in this. I, I, it's just... Uh, uh, yeah. You let me know in the comments. And of course, the most significant change, I'm calling all three Wolfgang, but the reality is, the first generation is an Ernie Ball music man, Eddie Van Halen. This one is actually where he starts calling them after his son. And that's really it in a nutshell. I mean, holy moly, I'm sorry I'm going fast. It's just such profound differences. Uh, so again, similar choice of woods or same, Glued on fretboard, different neck, different pickups, tone knob, arched body, different heel, neck directly mounted, different trim system, comes with the detuner. Holy moly, I wonder if I missed anything because it's just such profound differences. And I want to lay it down because I just think this guitar is just absolutely stunning. I never thought, again, like I said in the intro, that I would be playing a PB guitar. When I think of PV, I think PA systems. I'd love for you guys to comment in the uh, comment section how we, uh, how that even work out. I mean, you would think he would go to Gibson, Fender. Well, he eventually did, but to end up at PV of all things. And let me show you just here. Oh, and I forgot. There's a cavity now, guys. Look at that. An actual cavity, it gets better. They even did a sub cavity underneath. So if you press down on the actual uh, nuts, you have a little sub cavity as well. So notice now you're banging into the cavity 
which softens it with a subcavity rather than banging uh, against the finish of the body. And that's obviously another huge design. Uh, well, that I can call an improvement. That's an absolute improvement. Uh, that Ernie Ball thing, uh, I'm just not a fan of. I don't think that's very... So see, um, you're banging against the cavity rather than the body. Of course, the cavity is part of the body, but you know what I'm saying. It's just so much prettier. I mean, if you have a Floyd and a dive only, you know, make a nice cavity for it. The Stealth one has the nicest of them all. And again, just look how flat that radius is. An incredible improvement. So this is probably the first one, he, the first time Eddie felt like he actually had the guitar he wanted. Um, funny enough, was not the Ernie Ball, which all of us pay the most money for. If you actually wanted what he wanted, then PV will be the first time that it provides such. And that sentence in itself is just mind boggling, isn't it? All right, here we are. The gimbal is charged up again. And we are at number three, the final, um, well, that doesn't even make sense, the final, final nothing, <laughs> just number three. This is the EVH. We call it Fender because after uh, Eddie split with PB, he eventually ended up with Fender, but making his own company under the Fender umbrella. What a brilliant move. What a fantastic move because Fender Custom Shop built some of the greatest stuff in the history of the planet, the greatest amps. And so it only made sense for him who builds amps and guitars rather than keep putting his name on existing stuff to have one of them build your own brand. And now that is EVH Gear, EVHgear.com. Imagine Ferrari building your car with the expertise they have. Uh, your engine, but Ferrari engineers building your engine. That's what this is. And sorry, the case is a little dusty because we don't use the case a lot unless we go play live. And this is a guitar I play live all the time. You can also see it in like two of my music videos. And ladies and gentlemen, that to me is the greatest guitar. The greatest all around guitar ever made. And you know what? I just want you to look at this thing for a second. You know what I'm going to do? When you look at a piece of art, you don't need an imbecile like me talking. Let's just shut up and enjoy this for a second. I mean, look at this thing. I remember many years ago, I first saw this at a wall at Sam Ash and it just, I knew right away I was looking at an F-18. I didn't even have to take it off the wall. I think I, think I literally knew the moment I saw it, I was gonna buy this. And as you know, now they're pushing the, um, <clears throat> the Edward Van Halen signature, which is the generation after this with the chrome hardware and the kill switch, even though this is the sought after. And I think these might be coming back sooner than later here. Look at the binding, the hand binding, the EBH custom hand wild pickups. Still have the tone. The tone is very firm, whereas this is incredibly loose. For whatever reason, this is reverse, so when you're here, you're not on the neck, you're on the bridge. Kind of annoying, because no matter how hard you try to remember, at some point on stage, you'll mess up. The quality of the ebony is absolutely ridiculous how good it is. It is super thick. It is stainless steel vintage, which I absolutely love. People in the beginning complained it should be jump or no. The best thing about this guitar is that it's vintage fret wire. By the way, the PV is something in between. So was the Ernie Ball, but the PV was kind of tall and rather awkward. Took a little getting used to. The craftsmanship on this guitar is so ridiculously good. It is stupid. Um, 
as you know, I have my own review about this guitar from a few years ago when I got it. You can watch that review as well if you care to subscribe to my channel. The case is this beautiful red velvety with the... Um, I'll go right here for you, open this up. A documentation inspection card. I think we had enough of that stuff. Uh, well, the advancements keep going. Now we're back to the... <clears throat> on the arm screw in mechanical system the the uh drop d tuners always what's so cool is that this finish is kind of like a matte thick kind of concretey stuff it's not a cheap matte black um it is so cool and high look how kind of like a total like army tank kind of a thing this guitar comes in different colors as well gray white um, the newer version has these weird hooks that I don't like because you can't replace them. They're so thick. Um, and the Stealth one, this is called the Stealth, I guess due to everything being black on it. A nice contrast with the zebra zebras. Uh, the Stealth version comes with dots. The other ones have blocks. Look at the finish of this thing. Just a hand. Notice it's exactly the same headstock as the other ones but with this now gone. And probably the headstock shape being the least favorite thing on this guitar for me. I have never played a guitar that is more stable than this. It has a dual graphite rod system. One on the left, one on the right, and the regular rod in the middle. I have literally, and I'm not making this up, I have literally left this guitar in the cold for three months, picked it up, and it was in perfect tune, including the detuner. It is by far, the most versatile, best all around guitar I think ever made. And trust me, I, had, I have had the privilege to play a lot of guitars, even here today uh, on my wall. Let me reset this for you can see, excuse, you have a lot of different stuff. You have Les Pauls and Fenders and N4s and Majesties. And of course, as you know, I have a lot more uh, a lot more other stuff, but um, this, uh, look at also the cavity. Forgive me for jumping around, but uh, that's the beauty of this, you know, the, look at that, a perfectly cut out cavity. It even has a little cut out for the detuner. Um, it is absolutely mind-blowingly incredible how good this guitar is, and I'll take it out. You can tell the cat in the background is getting really excited too. So, hey there. All right, sorry, I had to go and lock away the cat. She was too excited. That's usually when she wants to play. Um, let me just put that here for you. I mean, and you can tell I play this thing. Just, um, and the finish is so high quality that even though this guitar has hundreds of hours to play on it, as you can see, there's barely any wear here. It's more kind of dirt uh, than anything else, just of high, how high end quality the finish is on this. It just looks so good. Wow, I mean, as you can tell, I have to take a deep breath. Just, just, it reminds me of how I felt when I first saw this guitar. It is truly superior in any way compared to the other two. It is more comfortable to play. For you who have an Ernie Ball, you know that they're incredibly uncomfortable to play. It is rounded more, it is refined more, it is better sounding. Those pickups are so incredibly dialed in. They're timeless, they, they, it, it's just, I tell you, there's not many guitars I talk about in this way like I talk about this one. The serial number is right there, the wood selection, so the same basswood with uh, with the uh, um, uh, maple top, but uh, um, but no bird's eye on this one. We went more stable, and look at the density of this. You know, I'm gonna go a little bit off here so it doesn't shine. Look at that. That is probably the most dense maple you'll ever see in your life. That is that is not an accidental selection. This is in clearly outsourced to the point of of 
making sure that you find the best available neck. Uh, and let me show it from this side as well. The quarter sun right there. It is so incredibly comfortable and dense. It is hard to describe how top-notch quality this guitar is. The cheaper version, quote-unquote cheaper version, the Mexican or Indonesian versions are very similar, but they're missing certain things with respect to aesthetics and um, under the hood. The arch uh, on this is absolutely spectacular. It is so comfortable to play. As a matter of fact, I'm struggling to, to come up with something that, that I don't like about this guitar. I, um, it, it, is, it is just perfect in the way it looks, the way it feels and plays. And um, it is absolutely mesmerizingly perfect. I mean, just look at this thing. It's like a freaking F14. And fun enough, you know, when I play live shows, especially in Asia or even here locally, people will come up to me. Women, like backstage, we hang with friends and they will say, by the way, that guitar is so cool. Is that, you know, that black one. I, I will rotate a few guitars throughout the set, but they will actually mention this guitar and be like, hey, is that specifically made for the Vatican's? They don't know it's a Van Halen guitar. They don't know that. They don't know what, what any of this is. And they actually think that matte black, I custom ordered or something. Just like when I sometimes play the Chrome Boy, the Ibanez Satriani Chrome Boy, people are like, oh, you had a guitar built for the Vatican's. They don't know it's a Satriani model, which is um, just uh, look at the craftsmanship there of how thick that ebony is. Um, and now, uh, uh, let's get to the improvements, so you know, too, before, because yeah, you can tell I'm just in love. And, and I think for any of, of you who own these, I, I know how you feel about them, too. So, Eddie now further, uh, quote unquote, improved. Well, no, it is an improvement. What he did, different with selection, no more bird's eye. He wanted the more, um, uh, how can I say, predictable nature of the maple. And for the first time, he went ebony. And he, as, if you know, he, he, he played these a lot. You never saw him afterwards ever going back to PV or Ernie Ball. Well, especially Ernie Ball. And why would he? This guitar is so far superior with respect to playing it all night. Asymmetrical neck. Compound radius. Now we have both. We were stuck on the Ernie Ball with a 10-inch. We went to a brutal 15-inch on the PV. And now we're going ebony. Asymmetrical, meaning it changes thickness from here to here, getting thinner and wider. And, and compound radius, meaning we're starting uh, on one radius here and then ending up on a different one down here. In this case, 12 to 16. Absolute perfection. Perfection. 12 in the upper register, Perfect where you're gripping, soloing, and then around 12, 9th fret, it starts to change to 16. And it is absolutely incredible to play. And even slightly deeper cut out here and there to make it more ergonomic and more comfortable when you sit and stand for that matter. And also with respect to axis when you uh, play in the upper register. On the back, the... Axis heel got a little recessed and further improved with big bolts, bigger bolts, I should say, and bigger washers. Slight deeper rounding here for when your backhand is on there to rest and also much deeper body edge contour. Uh, also, the plastics are recessed. A lot of times I just have them open for months to have easier access to the back. But however, when you just have a dive bomb tremolo, it doesn't matter. And then just this, look at this density. I mean, just take, I mean, <laughs> guys, this is about as fine of a piece of wood you can use for a neck. There is nothing about this guitar that you can make better. Nothing. It is absolutely perfect. The only thing, like I said, that I kind of never got used to was that little shark looking um, headstock. It's a little weird. 
And I see what he's trying to do. It's kind of exactly like the PV, but with the cutout guns. So if you were to overlay them, it would look exactly the same. Uh, obviously, this is also called the Wolfgang. I don't know what to say, guys. This is one of those, if you don't own one of these or haven't played one, you're clearly missing out. So um, they're not cheap. They are $3,300. Uh, probably about, yeah, with tax, I mean, you're still looking at three something out the door. But boy, if there was ever a you get what you pay for, I promise you on everything that is musically holy to me, this this is um, this is one of those situations where you truly get what you pay for. Also, again, with respect to the tremors I pointed out, now you have your option to kind of stiffen it, of course, have it loose. It is an incredible piece of art. It stays in tune. What's under the hood is just as impressive as what's uh, outside of it. And that completes our individual little model show. Let's line them up and get the suspects on one frame. Well, guys, here it is. The, uh, I guess the, the master shot of all three lined up in all their glory. And what a beautiful sight that is. I'll step out a little bit. Just the, the light's heavy on them. It's kind of cool to see that reflection and just uh, see them side by side. I'll get in here a little bit for you. A great shot right there you can kind of tell how deep that uh, arch is on the pv wolfgang um, and again the ernie ball by far the most uncomfortable to play it's it's just incredibly sharp here has no rounding not even a con contour because sometimes the the little contour here actually offsets the pain of when you rest here. So for sitting down, this guitar is inc incredibly hard to play. Um, and also uh, the neck on this is uh, much, much thicker too. And we'll go through that in a minute when we play them. Uh, I'll go through each and one individually for a minute or two just to give you my impression with respect to how they feel against your body. But um, yeah, I just... Uh, so hope you're enjoying this as much as I am right now. This is just uh, beautiful, beautiful stuff. And um, just gives you a little bit of a, of a, I guess a bird's eye view, if uh, no pun intended. Let me go a little bit here from this angle. You can also see how the binding is different on the stealth compared to the uh, PV, so is the jack, it's square on the PV, it's uh, uh, a nice kind of overly shaped one, and the jack is actually slightly recessed into the body, and then the regular plate on the Ernie Ball as well. Of course, a lot of sentimental value attached to these guitars, you know, obviously, uh, look how stunning that Ernie Ball looks. Uh, you know, sentimental value, sorry, I just, uh, I'm a fan like you are, and uh, it's hard to stay focused. The um, Ernie Ball being uh, right now the most expensive one with respect to also being the oldest one and value. It'll be very interesting to see what happens with the PVs because nobody can publicly say, hey, PV is one of my favorite guitars. That, of course, would be uh, immediately would silence the room. Uh, although I will tell you right off the bat, it is one of the most underrated and undervalued guitars on the market right now. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with these AVHs across the board, outside of the stuff they're gonna bring out posthumous for him. But, uh, um, and, uh, but I tell you, do not write the PV off. Um, do not write it off uh, just yet. Different headstocks. This one here. Ebony, when did you ever think growing up you'd see Eddie actually end up with his favorite axe being Ebony? And I could also tell 
just from personal experience, how in love he was with the final full circle. I mean, this was by far, um, I think, the first time he thought he completed his quest. Same with the amps. I think when the EL34 came out, he was... Actually, I take that back. When the 6L6, the Black Stealth came out, I think that was the first time you could tell. And of course, they always have to sell you stuff. They're going to say that. But uh, I'm talking a little bit behind the scenes information as well. And um, let me turn them around for you as well. While we're here, might as well. So you can kind of see them from a different angle as well. And uh, I'm so enjoying doing this today. And uh, not just in the memory of Eddie, but also to maybe add a little drop of water in his endless ocean of what he's provided for us. And uh, yeah, that's a, that's a good, uh, actually a really cool shot. Look at the cutaways, how they changed. Yeah, that is really interesting. Um, not, not so much really to discuss, you just have to take it in. You can also tell how the the EVH is slightly wider and then Eddie stretched to the hair finally and made a little bit more, made it a little bit more ergonomical. Um, and it really shows just in the rounding on, on how it rests against your body. Because remember, he was not a fan of losing wood, so he would never do an arch cut out here on any of them. But boy, I tell you, does your arm rest easier on the stealth than it does on the, um, on the Ernie ball, for example four compared to a five bolt system here, which is much more longitudinal. Um, and then again, this kind of really awkward, weird, that is still due, due to this day, to this day with the, um, I mean, it's all cool, hey, it's a, a design choice, but it's, it's, it's still weird to me aesthetically. I mean, um, uh, yeah, you know, gotta be careful, I don't wanna, Say too many bad things about the only ball as people will come and 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 <laughs> come to my house. Uh, so just beautiful. Apologize about the glare a little bit. I have the light pretty, pretty hard. I'll get a little bit in the shade here for you, in front of the light, so you can actually really see. There you go, without it glaring so much. There you go. Um, that being said, all top quality. And remember. Of course, we want to be fair with respect to the times as well. And, you know, uh, I will be concerned if today's guitar isn't better than a guitar that's 30 years old. And by better, of course, I do not mean, um, uh, you know, superior with respect to ownership or value, sentimental value. Uh, I remember the first time as a child I, I saw the Ernie Ball. I mean, my life changed, you know, and, and I wanted one since that day. Uh, and, you know, so it has incredible sentimental value. Uh, but uh, I always use car analogies. And again, this is the Ferrari F40. Uh, it, it, it's, it's an all-time masterpiece, but not a car you want to take for dinner. And this is the 458 Italia, which is just an absolute modern day rock star machine. And quite frankly, I'm not really sure where this one fits because I myself am a, am a little bit of a victim to my own ignorance with respect to having a hard time acknowledging to myself how great this guitar is because it's a PV. And that's... Uh, something that I need to work on and, and, and become a little bit more open-minded. Uh, but I just remember how much I loved it in college and how great of a guitar it is. Um, it is inferior to the stealth in pretty much any category, but uh, so is pretty much every other guitar on planet Earth with respect to uh, modern day warriorship. But I have to say, I think... Um, I myself might rediscover a few things here when I play it in again, when I plug it in again in a few minutes here after not having had it here for quite a while. And there's the ultimate rock star. Hey, Layla. Hi. Hi. You, oh my God, you're so dirty. Would you get so dirty? Yeah, when she was meowing earlier, she went to play with her brother. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, not something you see very, very often. And I hope uh, that kind of gives you a little bit of introduction for you 
who maybe just wanted to get refamiliar with them or just dream of owning them or maybe have one but not the other or two out of three or um, so glad to share this with you, especially during these times. And uh, let's put them on the lap and actually do what they were built to be doing. Some great amp choices we have today, JP2C, we have the Satriani 410, and of course, no collection is complete without a 5150. This one I'm purposely running into the 112. And we're actually gonna do a little fanboy thing here and use the 5150L34 for all three guitars. But I wanna show you the settings I'll be using so you kinda have a reference because I really, really wanna try to expose those pickups, especially for their strengths and their weaknesses. Let me show you the settings we're gonna to use today and why. I purposely have the low and the mids on the clean channel rolled off uh, below the, the, the middle stage, but the highs turned up around two o'clock. Why? Cheap pickups with this kind of settings will be exposed and start sounding very squeechy. And this is a great way to kind of see how the, uh, the pickups keep it together. A great example of this is, I did this on the John Petrucci Majesty review and the Rainmaker and the Dreamcatcher pickups made by DiMarzio sounded absolutely incredible because that mid-range was offset with the mids being down. Something that John has on his amp, he turns the mids down quite a bit and then offsets that in the EQ. On the blue channel, we're gonna have the gain at two o'clock and again, the same exact thing. Now here it's gonna be more pronounced because depending if the pickup is overwound or not, it will start sounding real, real shitty. Now we all know the EVH Stealth, for example, sounds incredible. That's because it offsets that mid-range being down with the highs being turned up. It'll be really interesting to see how the PV handles that and more importantly, how the DiMarzios on the Ernie Ball handle that because that pickup is really the oldest and also maybe the least custom designed one. So it'll be really interesting to see how that offsets that. I wanted you to know the settings so you can kind of know what the baseline is for that. Uh, I'm not gonna go much into the third channel because the third channel on this, as you know, the 5150s is just pure gain. It's for shredding, it's for soloing. I wanna keep it clean and, and blue because I wanna expose the difference in pickups. Uh, anything you know on the third channel is really just lead and you're gonna add all kinds of things to it, reverb delay and, and then everything so starts sounding good. We're gonna keep it dry with nothing to mask the sound. This is not about, this is not about sounding good, it's about exposing the pickups. All right, guys, I wanted to give you real quick an individual little um, objective and subjective, uh, I don't know if you want to call it analysis, just maybe a few opinions on how these guitars feel individually. And I think this is really nice if you don't own one of them, or maybe you own one of them and you kind of agree or disagree, it'd be nice to hear your opinions in the comments. Um, because they really feel so different from one another. And then we'll cut into the, um, into the sound comparison, not sound test, but rather comparison. Again, if you want to skip ahead at any point, just, uh, um, you know, click on the timestamps below in the description. But I thought this was kind of really cool because it's something that you'll never get from the stores. You know, they got to sell you stuff. And here we can be a little bit more honest, if you will. Uh, that being said, I'll start right away with, uh, again, we'll go in order, oldest to newest. Here's this drop dead gorgeous uh, Ferrari F40. Um, and it does have a lot of similarities to the Ferrari F40 because I guess if you were to compare the F40 to the modern cars, it really would be the most stripped down and uncomfortable of them all, right? Not a car you would want to take for dinner. And to be honest, uh, that's kind of the truth with this guitar as well, with the 91 Ernie Ball, and actually with all of them for that matter. <sighs> It is an incredibly uncomfortable instrument, I have to tell you. It is, it sits uncomfortably. As you know, Eddie doesn't like to shave away wood. He mostly stood when playing anyway. Um, the neck is very thick, it's not asymmetrical. There's no compound radius. Uh, the frets are kind of confused in between what they are. They tall, medium jumbo, the way they're laid in. The worst, well, the worst part. <laughs> I'm talking a little bit subjectively now. Look. 
if you want to play modern stuff on this guitar with respect to progressive shred virtuosic uh this is not going to be the most comfortable guitar uh out of the three it's actually the most uncomfortable uh, the way it, it is razor sharp here i can tell you uh, uh you play for like uh 15 20 minutes uh and 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 it just really starts to really hurt uh, and the pickups are also i'm on the medium blue channel settings that i showed you but if you get to the high gain setting it can get very very muddy the, uh, and you know what the proof in what I'm saying is because, again, remind yourself how drastic, drastic, drastic of a difference uh, the PB Wolfgang is from this. I mean, in 90, uh, uh, sorry, in 2004, uh, no, no, in 94, you're done with this. And then in 96, he's at the PB Wolfgang and the redesign is just, I mean, incredible. Um, and, and, and I can see why it, it's, this is just not a good guitar to shred on. It just really isn't. Um, you know, the Ferrari F40, at least when you take it to the track, it is what it's supposed to be a freaking race machine. I've driven that car on the track and it will blow your brains, you know, but, but the reality is this isn't, it, it really, it isn't good. It's a good guitar and it's good at everything, but it really isn't great. Um, at, at one particular thing, except for just the sentimental and collector's uh, value that it has. Um, to play a, a, a whole gig on this guitar, if you're playing someone modern, lots of solos, it will be incredible and comfortable. And the last reason not being the 10 inch radius. And again, I bring it back to the Paul Reed Smith Custom 24. That's the one reason I think that holds it back. It's just, it, the radius just isn't too flat. And obviously it turns out it wasn't too flat for or flat enough for Eddie either. Um, I'm gonna skip here the, the clean sounds with a little comparison, but just to kind of give you a little bit of the of the sound. We'll go from uh, um, uh, 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 neck to uh, sorry from um, from uh, the bridge to the neck. Uh, they're reversed on the other two guitars. So on the on the PV and the uh, EVH, if you see them being up, and I say uh, bridge, it's because it's reversed. On this one, it's standard. <laughs> Tell everybody. Let, let's go, you know what? Let's do an open phrase just to kind of see how it gels. Very crisp, isn't it? Expose pickups, this is how you're going to do it. Beautiful. I mean, listen, there's nothing wrong with that. If you like that uh, late 80s, early 90s um, sound, this is this is uh, this is it. This is beautiful. Um, the problem is, once you get to the neck pickup, things start going sadly south very fast. So let me do the exact same phrase and show you what I mean by that. The reality is it's starting to get very muddy here. Listen. Remember the pick, uh, the, the amp settings, on, it, it's full exposing the mid and high range missing. on the D string, the A and the E, it's incredibly muddy. The pickups just aren't dialed in right. And I think that's another thing that you're gonna see when we do the sound comparison back to back uh, on, on how muddy this guitar is on the neck pickup. This is just not pretty. Listen to this phrase. not pretty. Uh, the, the, the bridge, however, is, is much cleaner. 
it's actually a little bit too bright. It has a little bit of that, um, uh, uh, you know, that 80s kind of over crisp to it. And if again, on, on the amp, if you set the mids down, you can kind of tell. Um, when you get into the higher register on this particular guitar, again, it becomes very hard to, to I mean, it's comfy in the mid range, but uh, uh, here it starts, if you, the 10-inch radius just kind of never feels comfortable for a shredder. I like to play fast passages, and uh, when you're in the high register, you can kind of tell that 10-inch radius really working against you. I mean, listen, 10 is basically nine and a half. It's a, it's a modern Strat, and if you look at it, you can just tell the curve, and, and you know, if you like to play fast passages, not gonna be a great guitar for you. Now, let me give you a mid-range sound, just so you kind of see how the pickups individually um, uh, 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 come through. Pretty, you can tap, definitely tell that dated sound. Uh, neck. Very beautiful. Now watch the difference though, if I go into the lower three strings. Here's gonna get out. It's not a good pickup. Uh, sorry, it's not a good neck pickup. It just simply isn't. It is incredibly muddy. And in these kind of amp settings, it should really, really come through beautifully. As, for example, you see in the Majesty review, or uh, as you'll notice on the PV or the or the uh, the EVH. But um, but. channel and you had a lot of reverb delay, delay and stuff and you mask it you can get away with shredding but uh, the neck pickup of this just isn't the guitar feels incredibly uncomfortable um, it is incredibly sharp it's starting to hurt here it doesn't sit well at all uh, I tell you I wouldn't last an hour practicing on this um, and it's one of the fav my favorite guitars I own uh, I'm just giving you the reality of things it's the neck is almost like a Les Paul 58 um, there's that overhang here that I can see that we talked about earlier with the nut hanging halfway over, which, which doesn't look pretty at all. You have that gloss cutoff right there going into the clean neck. Um, the guitar does feel super stable. But it's a fun guitar. It's a fun to take it to trash it around for, for 30, 40 minutes. Would I make uh, what would I make it through a two hour show on this? No chance. And and, and look at that, it, it's just incredibly uncomfortable. You don't have a tone control, uh, which is fine, I don't care. The middle pickup, I'm not even none of us care. Um, very dated, and the neck pickup, uh, it, it's just not that good. Not that good. Let's check out the PB. All right, here with the PV Wolfgang now. Uh, name change, named after his son. And instantly, I'll come right to the point. It feels so much more comfortable. Oh my God, the moment I pick this up, it's just so many changes. I mean, I wouldn't know where to start. Just remember what we talked about in the beginning. But the most important thing is look at the change in the body contour here, whereas the Ernie Ball has a very sharp cutout and, and this is just so much more comfortable. I mean, just look, it just sits uh, incredibly well. It's rounded. It still doesn't have the carve in the back, but it doesn't matter. Look how round it is and how beautiful. And just, uh, I, I, again, I, I feel so weird talking about a PB guitar, you know what I mean? Which is so strange to me, but um, uh, just aesthetically so beautiful. Huge departure from the, uh, uh, the frets, uh, the radius, we're now in a 15 inch. We're not compound, we're not asymmetrical, but but man, it's just, oh boy, incredible. Uh, I mean, the pickups are completely different now. You can tell that Eddie just, uh, you know, the change from this to the EVH Stealth is, is definitely bigger, better, faster, but man, this is a completely redesigned beast, different, different everything. I mean, it just sits great. The Fret wire is different, the fret radius is different, the neck is a little bit thinner. Uh, we have a, um, uh, uh, remind me, yes, a glued on fretboard, which gives a little bit more, well, 
supposed to give it more sustain. Whether you know you feel that difference on a high game uh, is to be debated. We have this gorgeous bird's eye, not too much, not too little. Uh, the Foydro system is absolutely spectacular. Drop D tuner. Oh, it works so well when dialed in. I mean, just another, another of a thousand Eddie inventions, you know. Perfectly in tune when the drop D is dialed in. Um, remember, the only balls did not come with the drop D. I added one on mine. But, uh, oh man, this thing just instantly feels so good and rewarding and ready. I don't even have to play it right now to know I can make it through a two-hour show. I mean, this thing just sits great, feels great. Uh, what an incredible redesign. And if you, if you um, get, you know, uh, the awesome privilege to own both of these, just you, you'll know what I'm on about, switching from one to the next. Just, I mean, just, you just went from a Toyota to a Bentley with respect to comfort, you know what I mean? Uh, now, let's, uh, we have this now, a kind of still annoying to this day, reverse. So now I'm not on the neck, now I'm on the bridge. And now I'm on the neck, so here we're starting to reverse it. I'm gonna have to change that because no matter how much you play it, with the reverse SETI system, I'm st you still get caught off guard, especially in a, in a live setting. Uh, tone control, remember, uh, Harvey PV uh, convinced him to do the tone control, will be a little bit more appealing to the masses, you know? Let's check the pickups. All right, we're very dry, blue channel, nothing's changed, only my shirt has changed. And uh, here we go, make sure I am on the bridge, okay? And, uh, Holy sh**, this is Eddie getting serious, you, 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 he's like, alright, I'm gonna take a guitar, I'm coming out of a bad marriage with Ernie Ball, and I'm gonna do what I always wanted to do, design my perfect guitar. And if you remember during that period how you can kind of tell that he, he, he had a little bit of an aura of happiness with him, you know, he was kind of sober before he went back to not being and then coming full circle and he had the short hair during balance, he, he finally gained some weight, he felt good, he looked good, he it was badass, PB was making incredible 5150 amps. And you can tell just the happiness he finally had coming um, full circle, having his first real design guitar. I didn't make a mistake earlier. I uh, told you this is kind of rotary it is, but there is still a little wrench in the back that you can use to kind of make it firmer or not. But check out these pickups, guys. And we'll stay on the bridge just for a second. Uh, you know, I'll do the same phrase as before. play this phrase is because it is it covers every frequency from from below 50 that you can hear to freaking uh, 12k and up and 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 oh my god if you want to expose a pickup this is it i mean this is this is just crunch pornography uh the neck are you ready watch the neck now same exact thing again and i don't expect you to remember the uh the uh, i'm sorry things coming loose here i'm gonna play this more often We'll get to the back-to-back -back sound test, but just, just remember how muddy the other pickups were and listen to this. This is a neck pickup, listen to this. When I play this, I can still hear every single note. Bridge. Neck. That, boys and girls, is a badass neck pickup. That, 
listen, man. I know the Ernie Ball is the F40. We're not gonna talk shit about it, but 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 do not be confused. This neck pickup, that other pickup, man. So listen to this. <laughs> I mean, that is dry with nothing, man. No masking. Here's your uh, uh, bridge. Neck. If you don't think this is a badass sounding guitar, man, you you better, you, man, I mean, wow. I am just, uh, man, uh, it, this is just incredible. This thing sounds and feels good and is just badass. And again, when we get to the back-to-back -to -back tone comparison, we'll do clean and everything. I just wanna give you a little bit of a, of a first impression, taking them out, uh, out of the cases after all this time, but oh my God, I mean, listen to this. <laughs> Anything I missed? I don't think so, man. I mean, wow. Let's check out the EVH Stealth. All right, here we are now with the EVH Stealth. And uh, well, this is where things get super serious. I mean, now we're talking all the bells and whistles. Um, this is just now flat out a custom shop, a custom shop guitar. Uh, built by Fender, uh, 35 minutes from here. Uh, from Studio City and Corona. Uh, and it's nice when you go do the Fender factory tour. Well, not right now during COVID, but every Thursday, I think it is at uh, 10 or 11 a.m. I forget, I used to go a lot. And you'll get by the Jackson Custom Shop and the, the Custom Shop guys, and you see like a little section where it's being built. Of course, many variations, a lot of them built in Indonesia, Mexico, depending which Wolfgang you get. Um, but the USA Stealth, I mean, it's just, um, this is, we're talking, the craftsmanship is just ridiculous on this. I mean, the, the the wood density, the selection, the quality of the ebony. We're now talking uh, compound radius 12 to 16, stainless steel frets, which feel like butter, uh, asymmetrical neck. We're talking just everything bigger, better, faster. This is just, this is where things just get serious. I mean, this thing is just a freaking fighter jet. It looks badass. It feels badass, it plays badass, it is badass, and everything about it is just simply badass. And notice I'm bleeping myself now. I'm sorry for, for that previous segment. If you have kids, I made sure I, I, I did the bleeps because I get so excited. And dear Lord, I mean, just look at the... Oh, man, I mean, this is just... Uh, um, it's hard to not get excited with these things. Again, the drop D, which just works perfectly. Everything on this is like the PV, but more refined. So you're not talking a revolution like you have from the Ernie Ball to the PV, you're talking an evolution. But it's just, you kind of went from one Ferrari generation to the next. Everything is the same, but it's, it's, it's not the same. It's been improved. Tweak to get, get give you that extra five horsepower, to give you that extra uh, uh, one tenth of a split second around the track. And this is how this thing feels. I get compliments on this guitar. I play this, you've seen it in my music videos. I have three of them, sorry, two of them now. And and I literally have, have 
women and men come to me after the show and be like, dude, that black guitar, that mad, what is this? Um, and just look at the binding. Oh, man, this thing is just, just pure sexiness. Uh, it feels incredible. It sits incredible. Uh, everything about it is just perfect. I'm telling you, it is one of the best all-around guitars ever made. What Paul Reed Smith tried to accomplish, which, which is make the perfect combination of a Les Paul and Strat, this guitar actually did accomplish that. The Custom 24 didn't. Um, <laughs> listen. Again, the reverse pickup thing. I'm actually now on the bridge, not on the neck. I, even I have to think about it. Um, and, and just... Where do we start? You know what? Same phrase. Let's keep it repetitive for a reason. So when we do the back-to-back, -back, we're doing stuff that exposes the pickups and not so much about shred today. If you want shred, go watch one of my music videos. But but uh, let, let, let's start with the... Uh, where am I? I'm on the neck, therefore I'm on the bridge. <laughs> so right away, even though it's five minutes ago that I played the PV, I can clearly remember it being a little bit crisper, and not having that beautiful mid-range. And notice how this one does. It is truly now custom bound and custom dialed in and custom designed. You can tell he went back and, and, and it was, you know, the, the PV pickup was a little bit overexposed in the highs. And remember, we have the mids down. Remember, we're at uh, 10 a.m. on the mids. And, and listen to how much the mids come through. Right there. That's why the blue channel is so great. If you go to the red, you're just gonna mask it with too much gain. Uh, but my dear Lord, listen to this. Neck. That is the warmest yet most bite aggressive neck pickup I've ever heard. This is almost like a 498 uh, meets a custom bucker on a Les Paul. It's kind of like... It is so damn contained. It, it, it is just, it is, it's like a sniper bullet. It knows exactly what it is. It's not confused. It's not trying to be anything else. It is just simply a, a, a silver bullet. Let's go through the phrase. A uh, bridge.
All right, guys, here we are at the last segment. And then afterwards, I'll do some closing thoughts. But what I'm going to do now is get out of the way, reposition the camera, get away from this ugly face and, and stupid uh, ESL. And uh, we'll have some fun. I'll, I'll pick a good angle. And then we'll just spend 10 minutes just going through different phrases, clean. We'll start on the bridge pickup. I don't think I need to name the guitars. You know which one is which, I'm, you know. Um, and then we'll go to the neck and just work our way through uh, clean into uh, crunch and even some red channel stuff, you know, just for the fun of it. Um, I'm purposely gonna play very simple, basic open chord stuff, maybe a couple shred licks at the end because the idea is to really just expose the pickups for how diverse they are rather than masking them, okay? And that's why I'm gonna keep it very, very dry. You know, because um, once we start adding stuff, then it all st starts sounding great. The idea is to see the difference in texture. And even though uh, this mic here or miking or direct isn't going to give you the full picture, it will at least expose how different they are with respect to resonance and the body that carries them. So enjoy. And uh, here it is. Just, uh, you know, it's always going to be first the Ernie Ball to the PB to the EVH. So you can kind of see the natural progression of how it builds and we'll uh, do a little bit on the bridge and then we'll go to the neck enjoy <laughs>
have a pretty cool little uh back to back and i love that we did it dry so we made it really about the differences of the guitars the way they sound rather than masking it with all the special effects that we would use in real life producing it you know and i don't think i've ever seen it like that back to back so it's really cool to kind of get it like that and i hope you enjoyed that as well you know um i'll, gi I'll give you my opinion real quick because you notice today it's not so much just about how the guitar sounds. There's so much more to it. Uh, owning a guitar, how does it feel? How does it make you? Uh, how does it feel when you look at it, when you hold it? You know, the neck, the aesthetics, the beauty. It's like a car. It's not just the driving. How does it make you feel when you sit in it? And I can't believe I'm about to say this. I'm actually about. I don't know what what the date is today. Today is the. It's election day, November third. And I will say on record, I'm about to say on record, that one of my all time favorite sounding guitars is a PV. I, I can't believe these words are coming out of my mouth. So, and, and I'd love your opinions and I really hope you go into the comments and tell me how you feel. But when it comes to sound, well, let's go about feel. Let's start with feel and then sound. And I really, really, want to discuss this with you and I wish you were all here in the room. So this is the most sentimental. Okay. I mean, this is, as a child, you look at the ad and you're like, you, 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 this, this is like you getting, making a dream come true. Right. And even more than ever now, because to get it in mint condition and it's rare and it's, it's hard and it's expensive. The PV is second in line because you can tell how happy Eddie was to go there and truly how much work and passion he put into it. And then the Stealth is kind of the least exciting but the deadliest, right? It's like a new Ferrari. It's all computers, whereas this is all stick shift, okay? Sound-wise... This to me is kind of like the, the shriekiest. It, it, it's, I think you heard it, it's incredibly bright, incredible shrieky, incredibly dated. It is great if you want to go into that time period and drive that car, but, but it is, the reality is it's, it's, and it's uncomfortable, aesthetically has some issues. It isn't, it doesn't sit right. What kind of, you know, and that's the trade-off. It's that F40, hardest to drive, hardest to own, most expensive to own, but the most exciting to have. And the Wolfgang, to me, sounded the best on the clean channel. When we did that little Stevie Ray thing, Lenny, right? When it goes into the, right here. And then... When we did that, to me, that's when I knew right away that the, the, the PV Wolfgang, to me, had the best clean, thick, rich sound. You can just tell how big of a departure it was from the Ernie Ball. It really was. And you can just tell, you, you know, it, I, I still have to come back to it, how incredibly different the Wolfgang is from this, which just, and the reason I bring this up is because it tells me how unsatisfied Eddie must have been on this. He didn't move on and now he's gonna sell you a new product. Of course he has to, but it's unlike other artists that then have similar specs and stick with him. He really, really, I mean, you're talking a completely redesigned thing compared to the PV to the Wolfgang, to the EVH Wolfgang. The EVH Stealth is a little bit more refined in the clean sounds, but but a little bit more generic 
However, in the distortion sound, the EVH Stealth to me was the best because those pickups were truly, you can tell just the evolution of even more refining it. Whereas in the, in the distortion aspect, the PV struggled a little bit to, to keep that compression in the mids and the highs. And then the dirty ball just simply is just a very squeaky, screechy. And, and then in the, in the, um, you know, in the, in the neck position, it's just incredibly muddy, you know, and again, it's, it's a 30 year old guitar and, you know, Eddie was limited here and Ern, you know, Sterling insisted on, we base it on this platform. And I, I, again, it's just, you know, when you force each other in a relationship, things start boiling, you know, so, um, but, uh, I, I think my favorite for, for the mission will be the EVH Stealth. My favorite for excitement is the PV Wolfgang. And then my favorite sentimentally is, is of course, the, the Ernie Ball. And they're also such in price, the EVH Stealth being not a cheap, but the cheap, well, costs more than the Wolfgang's PV, but the PV went up in price now due to Eddie's passing. And then of course these are ridiculous, especially if you get them with all the um, the paperwork and, and mint condition. Um, I hope this gave you a little bit of a of a uh, insight beside beyond just the sound of how they sound, how they make somebody feel. And I'd love to hear your comments. Uh, I'll leave you with uh, with like I I think I've done it in another review with uh, Alley of Brand, a song that I've recorded. Even though you see a Les Paul in it, it's actually the whole song is recorded on the stealth if you want to actually hear it produced. A little shameless promotion, but also an, uh, a note to me playing the Wolfgang in the video. And I hope you, you support and enjoy because that's what Eddie told me to do is uh, do your own thing with it. You know, uh, I'll share a story with you now that he's gone. Uh, you know, I'm good friends with his sister-in-law, Jennifer, a very good friend of mine. We're doing music together and she used to come to the, our live shows with the Vatican's. And uh, when she realized I play stealth, she sent him a video. This is way back. And he responded, oh, cool. He's good. And uh, after that, of course, I can die, you know. And a day or two before his passing, she was here. And, um, you know, we were playing. And I was like, let's send him a little video. You know, he was with, with, his, with his current wife. And it was a day or two we knew it was kind of, you know, bad and... We took a little video of me playing the stealth and she sent it to her sister and she responded, I just played it to him and, and he said, oh, I remember that guy, he's, he's good, you know? And, um, and it's just, um, you know, to know that your hero saw you uh, and, and uh, or in my case, you know, being the last player he saw and, and, and it actually put a smile on his face, you know, uh, is incredibly, I don't know what the word is, just such an incredible feeling of warmth, you know? <laughs> oh man, I'm gonna get sentimental, you know? But, uh, and, and just kinda, you know, it sinks in now, you know, what, what that guy did for all of us. And when I look at my Facebook groups and the community, it's so much, you know, a lot of guitar players inspire us to play, but 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 very few of them inspire us to 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 be musicians and um oh man eddie you did both <laughs> you 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 did you did it all man so uh all right i'm gonna get out of here now <laughs> um it's a unique time a unique day and and you know you you only live once man you can't take it with you so you do whatever you have to do to get one of these and and do what what Eddie would have wanted you to do with it. Um, love you all. Stay safe out there. Don't give up. Survive them all. Beat everybody that beats you and keep on rocking and playing. Uh, like Eddie said, if not, I'm going to come looking for you. And uh, here's a little uh, Vatican's for you. And uh, see you on the next review. I hope you enjoyed this as much as I did creating it, regardless of how long and and and, and dragged out it is. But uh, But... I can talk about these things all day. See you around.